Which is king, diesel or battery? We hear this topic daily, and today we're going to explore it further and let you decide. Hello and welcome to Automator's Edge. Before we start, do me a favor and zap that like and subscribe button. Let's gear up for the world of control automation. Simplicity is often overlooked. The journey of a nut from farm to plate raises contamination concerns with traditional methods involving chemicals and fuel emissions. After all, can a product truly be called organic if it's exposed to truck exhaust? However, Flory's Industry, Caterpillar, and California's Holt Cat dealer are prioritizing food quality by collaborating for more efficient and healthy food production. Holt Industries developed a lithium ion battery power field elevator to lift harvested products from the harvester to the storage truck, while Caterpillar's 600 volt modular battery pack replaces a 74 horsepower generator. Caterpillar's new battery technology enhances performance and minimizes space requirements in the electrified powertrain. Engineers will integrate these batteries with critical technologies, creating a compact and efficient solution. The goal is to find more effective and efficient solutions to bring food from the farms to our tables. In the real world, are EVs superior to ICEs? Stay tuned as we analyze the pros and cons of both, allowing you to decide. But first, let's dive into our premier product highlight brought to you by Mauser Electronics. Cruze's solid state relays feature a lighter design without compromising power, making them well suited for challenging environments. The SSRs come in panel mount and in rail mount configurations, catering to various applications with a capacity of up to 125 amps at up to 660 volts AC. Featuring four series, they differ in these specifications. The SSRs are IP20 rated, ensuring indoor use and boast a wide operating temperature range. With integrated removable covers, they offer flexibility between IP00 and IP20 versions. With standard overvoltage protection and versatile robustness, Cruze's solid state relays are ideal for all of these applications. To learn more, visit Mauser.com. Learning is the foundation upon which success is built. In this spirit, we present David's Corner. Take it away, David. Thanks, Andy. There are three primary ways that power is moved through a control system. The first one is electrical power transmission. The second is mechanical power, like belts and chains and pulleys. The third one is fluid power, and that usually happens through pumps and compressors. For hydraulic systems, there are many different kinds of hydraulic pumps, and I wanted to show you how the inside of a couple of them work. The first one is called an internal gear pump, and you can see that it has a gear that rotates on the inside of an offset or an eccentric gear. As the central shaft rotates, the outside gear draws in fluid through the passages and then pushes it out with a very consistent amount of flow rate and pressure. We can change the speed of the pump and we can also change the size of the gears inside the pump to change how much flow and how much pressure is developed by these internal gear pumps. The next kind of pump is called the peristaltic pump. And this one is very common for food and beverage and healthcare applications. The reason is that inside the internal gear pump and most of the others, the fluid touches the metal on the inside. In a peristaltic pump, the fluid never leaves the tube and therefore it never has a chance to get contaminated. As you can see from the motion, small rollers squeeze the flexible tube and create the pressure to slowly draw the fluid at a low pressure but a very predictable flow rate through the hydraulic system. These are just two examples of the many varieties of hydraulic pumps that are out on the market, but it's interesting to see the insides of these pumps to know that when we're maintaining a hydraulic system, we know how they work, and therefore we can employ the proper preventive measures to make sure that we're providing our system with the best care that we can. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. Life is a series of trade-offs, and finding that elusive panacea is a rare discovery. However, as the energy debate between diesel and EVs revs up, we thought we'd bring you the top three pros and cons of each and let you decide. 
Let's start with the pros. All right, so for ICE, we have fuel availability. Obviously, diesel is readily available. It's easy to implement, and that's critical when you're out in remote areas. Number two, we have durability. The diesel engines are known to be a bit more durable, and that's an obvious plus. Number three is longer operating range. Especially in harvest time, you're out there. You gotta be as productive as possible. You don't wanna be slowed down. Now let's take a look at the EVs. Number one, prevent contamination. I think this is its biggest selling point. Nobody wants to eat contaminated food. That's going to obviously have catastrophic repercussions for uh, production and sales. So that is a huge plus. Number two is the battery health monitoring. There is more transparency here. We have early issue detection available. That's a huge advantage. Next is energy independence from fossil fuels. You know, I hear this all the time and I'm gonna push back a little because it's going to take fossil fuels to extract the rare earth minerals and then transport those to their destinations. Okay, let's head on over to cons. For ICE, we have environmental impact, the chemical contamination, obviously contaminating crops, fields, people is not what we want. Number two, poor system health monitoring. Diesel engines have a way of, I don't know, going kaput and leaving people stranded. And in the case of agriculture, slowing up production massively. All right, number three, reduce food quality. These emissions get on our crops, tainting our food. Nobody wants that. Okay, let's head on over to EVs. First, we have the charge time. That's the most obvious. It's inconvenient to be waiting for charging, especially when you have such a large battery. Number two, extended harvest workdays. The time of harvest is obviously most critical. You wanna be sure that you're in full production. And number three, the battery source. Questions of sustainability and logistics still need to be answered in regards to battery source, but these are our top three cons. What do you think? Are EVs better or do you still like diesel? Let us know, we'd be happy to hear from you. That's all we have today. Thank you for joining us at Automator's Edge and we'll see you next time.